lacrosse community. My name is Ryan Burns. I'm the president of the Lacrosse Leadership Institute. It's our mission to empower everyone who loves lacrosse to utilize the skills you gain in the sport to accomplish your goals and live the lives that you want to live. I'm so excited for our conversation today with Coach John Ozizzi of Torrey Pines High School, West Coast Stars, Tufts alumni, all around epic dude when it comes down to growing the game, youth development, and helping kids get recruited. John, thanks so much for being a part of this conversation with us. Can you start by giving us a little bit more of your background and let us know how you got involved in lacrosse in the first place? Awesome. Yeah, Ryan, first of all, thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Um, and yeah, my journey is a little bit interesting. Grew up in New England, uh, right outside of Boston. Didn't start playing lacrosse until uh, freshman year in high school. So it was a late bloomer to the sport um, as it was growing in the Northeast back then. And then went to college probably five minutes from where I went to high school, went to Tufts University outside of Boston uh, and played there for four years and had a great experience. Um, and at that point was just tired of being in the cold and wanted something different. Had to kind of get away from, you know, my comfortable area and my parents and drove to the furthest place away I could find, which was San Diego um, for just the summer initially. And then, you know, as luck would have it and as everything in life is about timing, uh, the sport of lacrosse had just turned into a varsity high school sponsored sport in 2003. So it was the perfect storm. Ended up getting into graduate school and, and started my coaching career. And, you know, here I am gosh, 17 years later, uh, still doing it. So all good, been a great journey. Joe, that's so amazing. I'm sure you've had a, a ton of great moments, but do you have one or two pinnacle lacrosse moments that stand out over your career, whether it was playing or coaching the last 17 years? Yeah, you know, my playing career was so far removed that it's like ancient history in my mind. Obviously I had a lot of great memories and some great friendships, but I just think, you know, at, at Torrey Pines, we've been able to win a lot of championships. And I think you know, there wasn't one that was better than the other, but the bonds that you have with that group, anytime you're able to win your last game in a season, you know, they're forever. And it's just, you know, those moments uh, with that group of kids, each of the five years we've won, you know, I'm still on group texts with all of those kids from those particular senior classes. So, you know, the championship teams, you know, they're just a little bit different and more special because you're bonded forever. I'm sure those things stick out. And I can imagine that there are certain qualities that stick out that I want to pivot to because of the intention of this conversation really focused on leadership. Can you tell us how do you define leadership and also how do you find success? Yeah, I think the leadership thing and, you know, we always tell our guys because at Torrey Pines, we've got a lot of serious guys that, you know, work ethics are through the wall. Um, personal development is a big thing. But we always tell those guys, it's not about how high you climb. It's about how many guys you can bring with you. So I'll see these guys going to the wall for 45 minutes a day on their own. And coach, I'm doing my stuff. I'm getting mine. I'm crushing it. It's like, that's awesome. But step two here is who are you bringing with you? And, you know, if you're an upperclassman, you need to encourage those young guys. So go play wall ball, but bring three guys and then bring four. And so leadership in that regard is, you know, it's, it, it's servant leadership. As cliche as it is, you know, the first day of practice, you don't have seniors going freshmen, carry the goals they're doing it. So you, you got to give a little respect to get some. So our culture has been great with leadership um, and success. You know, it's, it's funny because we've won five championships at Torrey and we've also lost four by one goal. And, and you just realize the definition of success. It's like one inch separates, you know, success. It's, you know, and like, there's a great quote too, like the difference between selfish and selfless in the dictionary is so small but it's those minute details that separate, you know, coming up one goal short or coming up one goal ahead. And, and so we're all about details and process. And I hope later in the conversation to get into all the things that Tory Vines that we do outside of just playing lacrosse. I, I think all those things are great in terms of building that culture and you've said it. So I, I think that now is as good as any time. So you can share, how have you created that culture of leadership because that's something that you can do on the lacrosse field, but it translates to so many different parts of our lives. So I'd love to hear how you've done that. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I think culture is probably the most overused word out there nowadays. And I, you know, it, it's something that we believe in and I don't know what I would want to call it, but it's just really the process, I think. And we've made such a focal point of, you know, trying your hardest at the process and winning, you know, every day and everything we do, like the rest will take care of itself. And there was a time when we had lost 
three championships in a row by a goal where our kids were so anxious to get that monkey off their back that they never enjoyed anything. And it's like, guys, you have to take all these small victories as we build. Like, even the years we didn't win, there were so many great moments and you did so many great things. And so, you know, at, at Tory, we've really gone above and beyond, uh, above and beyond, excuse me, off the field. Um, each year we've done over 70 hours of community service, which it, it defeats, you can combine all the athletic programs at our school and they still aren't doing it. And, and it's gotten to the point where it's like, it's not drudgery. Kids are actually looking forward to it. And we've partnered with some wonderful organizations, um, you know, <clears throat> One Love, Friends of Jacqueline, um, you know, we have the, the Wounded Warriors Project. We just have done a lot of things and it's become embedded and ingrained where kids not only enjoy it, but they become good at it. They look forward to it. And when they leave us, they're still doing it. Um, so the service aspect has been great, you know, just helping these kids realize that there's life outside of themselves, which in this day and age is very hard with technology. Um, and just the ability of like, you're, especially locally, it's like, you're in a position of power. All these kids worship you in this community that play lacrosse. Like, what are you doing with your power to give back and help? Like, you need to realize what you are capable of in the position that Tory Pines that you're in. And it's, it's been eye-opening and we do a lot of journaling. Uh, the kids have book reports. We really work on some public speaking stuff where the kids will present to each other. Um, you know, we have a senior dinner before every season where the seniors get up and give their speeches to the team about what they want the season to look like and what they need from each of them. Um, and the best way I can say it is it's really run like a college program. All the things that I've, you know, seen and borrowed or stolen from coaches or programs or did myself, I just, you know, you got to create what you want to be a part of. And we've created at Torrey Pines what we want. And, you know, a lot of kids actually quit the program because it's too serious or too much time. And that's fine. It's not for the faint of heart. Um, but the guys that are in our team every day are, you know, they're, they're asked to do a lot. And, you know, they come out the other end, better people. And that's all we can ask when you get here. What do you look like when you leave? What do you look like? And hopefully at the end, they're better people. Because um, if you're doing all this stuff, Ryan, I feel like the lacrosse part takes care of it. Of course, we got great drills. Of course, we're putting in new offenses and scouting. And that goes without saying, what else? So what? And first of all, so what? Who isn't doing that? What are you doing off the field that's going to help you win um, and trust and build that camaraderie? So, yeah, that it's it's a lot, man, and, and I'm really into it. And I think anyone that you talk to about me knows, you know, it's my whole world, and it's you know we put a lot of our heart and soul into it. So you put your whole heart and soul into it. It sounds like you created what you want to create with your life as well. I know we spoke last time, and you said your goals is for yourself have changed a little bit, and you couldn't imagine being anywhere else. Yeah. And and that's so amazing to see that you've taken an amazing sport and been able to allow yourself to flourish and live the life of your dreams. That's what we're trying to show. It, I know you probably didn't imagine it from the start. Did you ever have moments where you, you look back and you thought, you know, this is it, I'm ready for the next step? Or how do, you, how do you set goals for yourself and how do you stay motivated to continue to achieve excellence and push, the, push for that next level or that next tier? of a program or for yourself. Yeah, I think, you know, like anything in life, you've always got to be innovating and you've got to be evolving and trying to grow yourself. So obviously doing work internally is obviously huge. And then, you know, I go on a few professional development trips every year. I'll go visit a bunch of colleges, watch guys practice, meet with coaches, watch film, see what they're doing culturally. You know, I'm, I'm pushing myself to learn and see what, you know, and even if I don't like the stuff, it's like, all right, this is what else is out there. Maybe I like some, maybe I don't. And to keep growing and, you know, I look back when I was 23 coaching at the University of San Diego High School with, you know, kids that could barely cradle and, and you know, not that many kids were even playing the sport out in California to where it is now. You know, it's been a journey and I'm just sort of grateful for it. It's I'm not even sure how I got to where I got, but I think, you know, if you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. And so I just, I could coach forever. It, you know, it's like, I'm like, practice is done already, you know, and it's like... <laughs> So I think it's easy, but you got to just keep innovating and you got to keep evolving. And the game has changed schematically a little bit. Um, so that's important to stay ahead of it. But, you know, culturally, I just keep coming back to like the process. Kids have to enjoy the day to day and they have to be willing to lay it on the line every day, you know, if they want the end result. So, you know, a goal without a plan is just a wish. So like you got to like have a day to day to get where you're trying to go, whatever. Or even playing in college. All these kids want to play in college. Well, are you willing to make the sacrifice to play in college like you know that you're skipping steps so 
<laughs> that's so important as well. And that comes down to process. You can know all the different steps in order to accomplish a goal, but you have to do them in order. There's no skipping steps or else you don't have that foundation that allows you to grow. Jono, have you always had this idea around culture and leadership or how has this developed and gotten to a place where you're going and doing personal develop yourself and bringing that to your community? I think it's like, you know, kind of a twofold answer. I mean, I had a great coach in college, Mike Daly, who is now the head coach at Brown University. And, you know, he had never played the game of lacrosse. So what he was great at was, you know, managing young men, molding them. And he was like a GM. He, he was all about culture and doing the little things extraordinarily well. It wasn't this big schematic guy. And so it's always been my foundational piece, you know, and that, and there's that. And then just, you know, kids nowadays, like a lot of them crave structure. And for a lot of these kids, especially where I, the demographic of where we live of affluence and, and entitlement, I'm the first guy that's ever told these kids no, you know, or, or not good enough. Or, and so it's, you, you kind of have to have that cultural backbone because a lot of these kids don't maybe have it at home or aren't used to it in the classroom where it can cut corners. And we just won't allow it no matter who you are, or how good you are. And I think it frustrates kids in the beginning and they just, it's not worth the fight. They end up just learning to do the right thing. So that, that's kind of it. I think, I, you know, now any, any high school coach worth his salt will tell you now more than ever, you, you know, structure and process and culture at this age is so crucial given where we are as a society. So. I think that's such a big thing. And to be able to show them that they are in that stage of power and they also have the power to impact the community and those that are less fortunate around is such a huge thing. I, I really commend you for all that you've done in terms of those efforts. And, and one of the quotes that I saw from you before, we spoke about it right before is, separation is in the preparation. Do you mind sharing a little bit more about that and how you relate it to the kids and everything in life? Yeah, I mean, it's like you can control the controllables and we always feel like if we outwork everybody, if we do all the little things, all the behind the scenes things, all the extra things that maybe people don't want to do or aren't willing to do or that don't show up in the stat column, if we do all of those things, we'll be successful. And so this, you know, the separation of like what will help us win or not win isn't how we prepare. So again, it comes back to that process. If Monday through Friday, you're doing everything you're supposed to do and more and you're doing all your extras, you're going to be fine. You're going to be successful Friday night. So it's, it basically just means don't skip steps. And if you're willing to outwork everybody, you know, you know how it goes. Uh, it, it's just that simple. So, um, yeah, it's a, it's a catchy little quote that just means do all the little things right and be willing to do what other teams aren't willing to do. And, and I think it can also go down to the individual level as well. And that's where I want to leverage your expertise as the director of recruiting for Adrenaline. I know that's a role that you've had. I'm not sure if that's still your role, but can you share how these middle schoolers, high schoolers can do that little extra or what process they have to take to be successful and actually play in the next level? Yeah, I think, you know, with the age of social media, it's been great for the younger generations to be able to very tangibly see, oh, wow, these guys ahead of me worked really hard, did X, Y, and Z, and they're able to achieve their goals. This is a very real possibility for me if I stay on course. So back in the day before, it was like one or two kids were getting recruited. It was a crapshoot. No one from the West had any confidence or any real reason to work because it didn't seem like it was a tangible goal. You know, I, I think West Coast Stars and Tori, I mean, Tori has, we have 29 kids playing in college right now. I think, you know, it's sort of expected. And it's like, if I do X, Y, and Z, I'm, I can get to where I want to go. So the blueprint is there. Um, and the motivation is there. Seeing all these kids on Instagram or Twitter saying, I'm going here or there, or I did this or that, you know, it gives kids that, that blueprint and, you know, that aspirational piece that's like, all right, I'm working my butt off, but there it is. That's what I want, and it's attainable if I do it. And so, you know, the, the success with West Coast Stars, too, you know, there's 10 states worth of kids, kids from Nevada, Arizona, Texas, Oregon. We've got an Idaho kid. It's, you know, for me, outside of just the San Diego thing, seeing the game grow that way has been, I mean, it's unbelievable, right? The kids from Las Vegas are playing Division One lacrosse. It's like, you know, so it's working. And, you know, you see, you love to see the game spread because for me and you, it's given us, it's taken me to places I never would have gone. I've made so many friends out of it. And you just see that being passed down. It's wonderful. And, and whether these kids are playing NCLA or Division One or Division Three, 
you know, I played Division three, like plenty of guys play them. So it doesn't matter. It's it's not about that. It's about finding the fit um, and enjoying the sport at that level. So it's you know it's it's as you know it's living proof. Like it's it's great and it's a great West Coast Stars has just become a great vehicle um, for these kids to get to that next level because no one's coming out to watch a high school game in the spring because it's so far. So that's sort of where you know, West Coast Stars was birth. We'll take kids back East and we'll travel you and get you in front of all these guys. And then you better play well, but here they all are. So all eyes are on you. And it's, it's been great. I had a great experience with West Coast Stars back in oh, 2010. Can you share with our community how you started with West Coast Stars since you started right at the beginning and the transformation of where you guys are now, as well as where you want to go? Yep, I think West Coast Stars, I, you know, I started a local club in San Diego called RC and a couple other guys had started some local clubs. And back then it was, the game was growing, but the kids that were really good were few and far between. So a guy named Scott Hockstead and a couple other guys got together and said, let's just take the best. If we can take the best kids from all these 10 cities, we could actually go back and put West Coast on the map and be competitive. And at one point we had one team. Then we had, you know, two grades, a team. And then, you know, now we've got, you know, 10 grades and two teams are great. And so, but I remember going back to UMass with one team with one age group and all these kids that were just a bunch of nobodies from nowhere and all had something to prove. And like that group back in 2008 is really who set, you know, wheels in motion to, Hey, we're nobodies from nowhere and we're going to come on and kick your ass. And that's it. And we're going to be more athletic than you, maybe not as skilled, but we're going to play harder, be more athletic, faster. And we're just going to have an attitude. And, and that's sort of like been the birthplace of it. And it's, God, it, 2008, man, I remember that like it was yesterday. So, yeah, it's been great to see, like you said earlier. That's so amazing. And I, I, again, that's culture. It's having that chip on your shoulder and that, that keeps you driven. Yeah. I think those of us in the West Coast, we feel like we're maybe far away from that East Coast hotbed, but we know we're talented. We've got great athletes. We got people that have high aspirations. And like you said, there's a vehicle that we can be a part of to get out there and say, hey, I'm here, let's go. And we can fight. And, and that's all we need is an opportunity. So thank you for giving us that. Where do you guys see West Coast Stars going moving forward? You know, it's, it's we're, at a, we're at a level where it's, we've got two teams a grade. So there's probably 50 to 60 kids in a grade that you know, are aspirational enough and probably good enough to play at that highest next level. Um, and, and we're willing to take them on and support them and help guide them and give them advocacy. And it's, you know, it's, it's a lot of kids to manage, but, you know, we feel like there's enough of those kids. And, you know, at this point, it'll stay right where it is. We probably can't service more than 50 kids a grade that for that next level. And there probably aren't 50 kids a grade that are division one, you know, ready, so to speak. And then, all the local affiliates that feed into West Coast Stars, whether it's the Seattle guys, Oregon, San Diego, San Francisco, you know, there's clubs for those guys to go Division Three or MCLA. So I'm, I'm doing the local regional thing and then helping the highest level with West Coast Stars. But at every level, I'm trying to help wherever I can. Um, and that's the name of the game. It's not just these elite kids at West Coast Stars. It's locally. It's how do we help our San Diego guys that want to play MCLA or D3 or, or anything. It's how many people can you help? And that's ultimately what your legacy will be, you know? So it's, it, you know, West Coast Stars is one, you know, the carrot on the top, but there's a lot more that we do at Adrenaline that filters through all the levels. So, and, and you know, we got, at this point, we've got a lot of dads now that have kids. So like the coaching was always an issue out here 20 years ago. Now, a lot of guys that played out West are now fathers and they've got first, second, third graders and they're all coaching. So you have all, these youth programs are exploding because guys have either moved out West or dads at least know what the heck lacrosse is and they're coaching and it's not baseball and football dads it's guys that so it's been our youth program is almost turnkey I don't have to do anything I used to have to go coach it now it's like all right these guys know just as much as I do this is wonderful so yeah the youth is exploding um, especially in areas where you know San Francisco San Diego Seattle where you know lacrosse is probably a little bit more ahead of Arizona and Vegas and those areas so Yep, the, the dad coaches with guys that know the game has been awesome. That's cool, and that's inspirational as well for the Valley, just thinking about, okay, if we're a little bit behind those in San Diego, San Fran, Seattle, we've got alumni, we've got people moving out here. It sounds like it really starts with the youth and development in the regional areas, and it starts growing from there. 
Is that how you go about building a hotbed essentially in these programs or how do you go about building out just great talent year after year after year and have a perennial powerhouse of a program? Yeah, I, th I think the youth is the easiest way, right? You know, teaching an, uh, an old dog new tricks is always hard. So the, the sooner you can get them started, it's great. And obviously with the advent of the IMLCA convention or YouTube or the Jamie Monroe or Deemer class, all these things, online platforms, like maybe guys who don't have as much confidence in what they know of the game or dads, they can educate themselves real quick to be able to give great drills and, you know, not just blow a whistle and have a kid do a sprint. Like, you know, I think so. And to your point, when kids are coming home now in the summer, all these college kids are helping coach on youth teams and club teams. And that's, that's the beauty of lacrosse in general, the give back, you know, philosophy of it. And it empowers them to be role models and they feel, you know, popular and important and they're helping the young kids who look up to them. But the cycle is amazing. And that's how, and that's how it ought to be. And that's how it grows. So this summer I hired like 50 kids that were home and they all coached our teams and it's beautiful. It's like, Hey, I played where you were 10 years ago. And the kids, the first grade was like, you did. And, and you have like that moment where it's like, this is why we're all doing this. I think. So. Absolutely. That, that reminds me of my favorite lacrosse moment. And that's just seeing the little six year old with the stick that's bigger than him. He's just got this huge smile, just goofy laughing his little butt off. And I just can't help but think, man, this is why we do it. This is why we coach and give back is to, to see that smile and the opportunity. And who knows what's going to happen with that kid from here. But uh, it, it's just such a, a giving game. Can you share a little bit more about the giving you guys have done? Because I think that's such a, a big thing that not only does it creates a great culture for Tori, but it sounds like with the volunteerism, it's actually feeding itself and feeding the youth. And I, I think that's something that's important that I want to focus on a little bit more with these last couple minutes. Yep. So I think some of the, some of the, like I said, we do a lot of community service. I think some of my favorite initiatives, one, all of our kids are assistant coaches in, in or on one of our youth teams in the spring. So during our season, Torrey Pines is fed by three towns. All of them will be an assistant coach on a seventh, eighth, sixth, fifth, or fourth grade team that they help out with two days a week. So they're there, they're giving back, they're a presence. And then of course, all those kids are coming to our games Friday night to go cheer on their, you know, their dude. So that's the easiest one that we do. We do work with Harlem Lacrosse, which is now in LA. Um, and one of our favorite yearly things that we do is we do a homestay where they'll come down, they'll watch our game Friday night, and then they'll stay with host families of our team. And, you know, our kids where they live are, you know, these palatial gargantuan homes that these, half these kids have never been outside of, you know, Compton and let alone left LA. So now they're in pool swimming, playing Xbox, like, you know, it's like Disney World. And it's been a wonderful reciprocal partnership that we do once a year for a whole weekend homestay. Um, you know, and then the last thing that I think is, is our Friends of Jacqueline affiliation. And I know a lot of teams do Team Impact or, you know, Friends of Jacqueline is just something that we started with years ago. Um, and it's just, again, it's a constant reminder of how lucky we are. Um, and, you know, we lost one of our teammates back in 2014, which was a very like emotional season for us. And then we were able to adopt a new boy in 2015 and who's in remission and doing great and comes to all of our games and is really, you know, our fearless leader because our guys have had nothing to deal with as far as what he's had to deal with adversity wise. So those three particular organizations are, are the cornerstone of like things that I love about our service group um, and we have two parents that run our community service like it's like its own entity and it's like we're trying to and now with COVID it's like what can we do to help and volunteer what's even allowed you know should we go plant some trees like what can we do social distancing to help someone it's you know it's become challenging to help people in this current climate so on to the next thing of evolving but we'll we'll find some way to help and pitch in but yeah it's it is the cornerstone of our program and i would encourage more people to get involved with the organizations that i just mentioned they're all on twitter and social media and great places and great people well that's uh, amazing that you guys are up to so many different things i had kim appellate from harlem lacrosse on the podcast a couple weeks ago saw that actually so we're we're definitely working on that right now in terms of how, how do we bring arizona involved and it may be a partnership with LA, but it, it, that's such a, a cool idea in terms of getting the kids to, again, share where they are and allow them to see a little bit about what life is about in that adversity. Because yep. I think it's all about perspective at the end of the day. 
And if we can continue to stay positive, keep our heads down, grind, that ultimately results in success. I mean, a, a diamond's made from pressure and lacrosse is a vehicle to apply pressure to us when in all other forms, life is pretty easy. Yeah. And, and it seems like coach, you've done a great job of creating that for the boys and, and giving them that other per perspective. And it also sounds like you have the parents involved and engaged and, and a good amount of support there. Was that always there or how have you gone about getting parents involved and allowing them to run things like the, the charitable outreach? Yeah, pa parents are always involved, as you know, some in positive ways, others not so much. But, you know, you got to pick and choose who you can kind of can trust and, and who really wants to do it for the right reason. And we just have like committees and we appropriate people of who's going to keep score, who who's going to run community service, who's going to run our website. And, and honestly, like when everyone's pulling in the same direction, it usually works well. If there's a squeaky wheel, it does. And it's, it's hard to manage, but you need them. I mean, it's, you know, you need financial help I and mean, there's no dollars given to high school athletics in California. So everything is fundraised. I mean, without them backing us, we can't do anything. And without their involvement and help, you know, it's things are a lot harder for me and everybody else. So it's, I've been fortunate. Um, but it's, you know, if I'm a young new coach, you got to be careful. You, you know, you got to put, you know, the cart before the horse since you can't let them be too involved and there's always a fine line. So, um, but without them, a lot of this doesn't happen. You know, like I said, we have, a, we have two women that run our community service and are always looking for new things to do and new ways to help. So it's, it does make life easy. Great you have that coach. Is there anything that our community can do to support you right now? with any of your causes, whether it's lacrosse or non-lacrosse related? No, I, I think just if you look at the big picture of where we are as a, a country and a society, it's, you know, all, all guys that have played sports always come back to, you know, with all the racial upheaval and all the political divide, it's like in that huddle or, you know, in sports and on teams, all that goes out the window. And the beauty of being on, you know, a lacrosse team is like, it doesn't matter where you're from or, or what color you are, what, you know, what your beliefs are in politics. It's like, you're all working for a common goal and, and it doesn't matter. And I just wish that our kids and more kids can just carry that with them when they do leave, you know, playing, whether it's high school or college, it's like, take that into your real world. Like, why does it change now? You know, whether it's the workplace or your neighborhood or it's just, you know, it's a wacky world we're living in right now. And I think, you know, sports is the great equalizer um, and boundary crosser. So I just, yeah, I hope these kids carry that with them when they continue on in the world. That's such a great point, and I, I definitely hope so as well. Is there anything else, Jono, that you think we should know that could really impact our community or anyone watching this right now? No, I think, you know, as, as Arizona is sort of coming on the come up right now and trying to reinvent itself, and you've got some great guys that are now out there living that are really doing a good job trying to get kids not only, like, better but engaged and get more kids out. It's just whatever we can do to help get more kids involved is great. If interviews like this help or – you know, if, you know, more tournaments, whatever it is, just I'd love to see Arizona get up to speed with California with just the amount of kids playing, so. Awesome. Well, Jono, thanks again for being on the conversation today. We appreciate you so much, all that you've done, all that you're doing. I know we're going to see you set the bar even higher in the years to come, and I, I'm really excited we get to continue a dialogue moving forward. So thank you for all that you're up to. Awesome, Ryan. Appreciate it being on. Have a good one. My pleasure. Take care. Bye-bye.